on. We want to welcome everyone today. We'll give everybody a few seconds just to join our webinar. We're excited that you're able to join us. I'll take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Esther Moreno and I work for the United Way in the Lower Mainland region. Um, I'm the, their capacity building specialist and I work for the Population Health Division. We're really excited that you've chosen to take a few moments out of your day to join us for this webinar. You've joined the Choose to Move webinar that's promoting physical activity and social connectedness for BC seniors. Um, this is being hosted by United Way Healthy Aging and Choose to Move. I'll ask all those of you that are joining our webinar to just take a moment and in the chat acknowledge what territory you're calling in from. Uh, we know we have provincial reach and it's always great to see just how far reaching we, we are when we do these webinars. So please take a moment if you know what land you're calling in from to acknowledge that in the chat. I myself am calling in from the West Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil -Tooth Nation. Um, I'm honored to be live, play as well as work on their unceded territory. And uh, I acknowledge all three nations because um, originally before settlers came, this was a shared space from all of those three nations. So although Musqueam Reserve is nearest to me, we'll acknowledge all three nations. And today's webinar hosts and as well as panelists acknowledge the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the First Nations in all areas of British Columbia on whose lands we gratefully work and gather. A few webinar instructions in case this is your first one. Um, when you joined us, you um, were muted and your cameras will remain off. That's a feature of the webinar within Zoom. And we will do our best to leave at least 10 minutes for question period at the end. You'll see at the bottom on your taskbar, there's a Q&A feature, and that's where you can ask questions at any time. And those questions will be read out loud during the question period. If you're not too sure how to work that feature though, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. I'll be moderating those throughout the presentation and making a note to make sure we circle back to those questions there. If you have any technical difficulties in the background, we have my colleague Aman Fazal, and he can address any technical questions you may have. If you know how to, in the chat, direct your questions specifically to someone, he's listed as healthy aging. Please feel free to chat with him if there's any technical issues you're having. And the webinar is recorded and posted on Core BC. Uh, slides will also be made available there. So before we start the question and answer period, I'll make sure I review how to access that information on Core BC. Here's a preview of what we'll be covering today. We'll give you the opportunity to become familiar with the unique design of Choose to Move. You'll have a chance to hear about the impact that Choose to Move has had to date. And you'll also learn about ways to build capacity in your community and organization through Choose to Move. We have three panelists here today that have joined us. Uh, Krista Hoy, she is the Program and Evaluations Manager of UBC's Active Aging Research Team. Also joining us is Sarah Lucina, the Executive Director of Active Aging Society. And Omnia El Shayet, Seniors Programmer and Settler Worker for the Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House. Thank you so much, panelists, for joining us. And I'd like to welcome Sarah to begin our webinar. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much, Esther, for the warm welcome and to uh, everyone at the United Way for, for hosting us here today. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to be here and to showcase the work of, of Choose to Move, uh, as well as uh, the work of the Active Aging Society, uh, the um, Active Aging Research Team at UBC, and, and all of our uh, community partners across the province, including um, Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House, who Omnia is here representing with us today. Um, Krista and I humbly and respectfully attend this meeting from the unceded lands of Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people, and thank you, Esther, for your uh, land acknowledgement at the, at the opening. 
uh, Krista and I come here as uh, European descendants and uninvited uh, settlers on this land um, as um, a provincially focused on not-for-profit, the active aging societies work takes place like the United Way uh, across the traditional and unceded territories of many nations. And we're grateful for this privilege and to engage at a community level uh, um, uh, with so many uh, organizations across the province. Uh, I know that um, many of you who are on the call today uh, are coming uh, from, from community-based work. And if you haven't already, we, we do invite you to learn about the First Peoples and the land that you're on uh, and to embrace the journey of learning and unlearning. Uh, please seek out websites of the nations where you live and, and you can learn about those traditional territories and the Indigenous peoples globally at uh, an interactive site called native-land.ca. Um, I am going to, to move us along to uh, the, the uh, learning outcomes of the presentation. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over this slide because Esther did an excellent job of, of uh, reviewing what you'll, you'll take away uh, from today. Uh, but really, what we are you know, generally hoping uh, you'll, you'll take away from today are the, the many resources uh, from the Choose to Move program uh, and, and maybe some uh, inspiration uh, to, to promote more physically active, socially connected opportunities for uh, the seniors you serve in community. I'm going to hand it over to Krista to, to talk us uh, through a little bit of the, the context of the program uh, and, and uh, why it's so important. Krista? Thanks, Sarah. So as, as I'm sure all of you on the call are aware, we have a changing demographic. In 30 years time, one in four Canadians will be 65 years of age or older, or put another way, as of 2016, Canada has more people over the age of 85 than under the age of 15. And the proportion of our population over the age of 65 is increasing while the proportion of working adults is decreasing. So it's more important than ever for seniors to take care of their health as they age. This changing demographic presents us with both challenges and opportunities, and I'm sure you would agree that the pandemic has really brought to light the challenges that older adults are facing today. Yet, the opportunities are many if we can support seniors to stay healthy, active, and engaged in their communities. However, on top of our changing uh, demographic, physical inactivity and social isolation are widespread among our seniors. And we know that research, research shows us that as we age, social network size decreases, social isolation increases, which has negative health impacts on and can result in both physical and cognitive limitations. In Canada, we know that one in four older women and one in five older men report feeling lonely at least some of the time. And we suspect it's actually more prevalent than this as that's just the number who report this. 85% of BC seniors fail to meet the recommended amount of physical activity for health and mobility benefits and over 90% are sedentary for eight or more hours per day. This is important because physical inactivity has been identified as the fourth leading risk factor for global mortality that comes in behind high blood pressure, tobacco use, high blood glucose and just ahead of overweight and obesity. We also know that mobility limitations aff afflict more than a quarter of Canadians between the ages of 65 and 75. Yet not a surprise, likely to any of you, we know that there are piles and piles of studies that tell us that if we increase physical activity, it benefits a whole host of conditions, which you can see here on this screen. For inactive seniors, small increases in physical activity from doing nothing to say 10 minutes a day can have major impacts on their health and well being and their overall quality of life. And back to Sarah. 
So in response to these issues that Krista just reviewed, Choose to Move was born. Uh, doctors Heather McKay and Joni Sims-Gould and the UBC's Active Aging Research Team designed Choose to Move um, to really uh, address the, the need for, for more physical activity, promoting opportunities for older adults, as well as uh, um, opportunities to, to build social connections in, in community. And Dr. McKay and Sims Gould and their team continues to evaluate uh, and, and the implementation and impact of the program. Uh, the Active Aging Society was born to enable this implementation and scale up of Choose to Move. Uh, the society leads the collaborations uh, with many senior serving organizations um, that, that deliver Choose to Move uh, so that older adults across the province can uh, keep healthy, stay healthy, become more healthy. Um, and we partner with the Active Aging Research Team to, to monitor and, and learn about that implementation and impact uh, in real time. Um, the society is, is grateful for the steadfast funding from the BC Ministry of Health uh, and the uh, input and, um, and opportunity to engage uh, with um, many groups within the, the Ministry of Health. And as Krista said, you know, in the wake of the, the pandemic, more than ever, we, we need to keep older adults active and connected so that they can age in place with the highest level of health and quality of life possible. I'm going to toss it back to Krista to, to actually just take us through a, a bit more of the Choose to Move experience and, and what's involved. Thanks, Sarah. So Choose to Move is the signature initiative of the Active Aging Society, and it is a evidence and choice based intervention that promotes the health of older adults through physical activity and social connectedness. The support program that helps older adults to achieve those goals of physical activity and, and social connectedness in ways that make sense for them and in their communities. It's targeted towards older adults who are 65 or older who are not presently active or are socially isolated. Choose to Move is a group-based program led by an activity coach who supports groups of up to 15 participants per program. Activity coaches provide support to participants over the course of three months in two different ways. The first is a one-on-one -on -one consultation where the activity coach guides participants to set goals and select physical activities and social activities that meet their interests and abilities and will help them reach their goals. These often focus on small changes, you know, starting a conversation with where are you now? What can you do a bit more and what are you interested in doing? And Choose to Move is also a uh, big in referring uh, participants to existing community resources, including physical activity and social opportunities in the community. We really see Choose to Move as a wraparound program that uh, connects participants to those great resources that already exist. The second form of support is in the form of motivational group meetings where groups of up to 15 participants gather to learn about health topics and share what is helping or preventing them from being active and connected. And the sharing is really a highlight for many as participants are able to learn from each other and many report that they had no idea that others felt the same way as them. In the meetings, uh, participants discuss a health, a health topic, help each other troubleshoot and um, you know, it's really a, a source of accountability. So within Choose to Move, we, we really see it uh, centered around these six core principles. The first being that it is choice based. So that means that participants choose activities that they want to do, are able to do, and are available in their community. And these range from traditional fitness class type activities to learning how to weave more movement opportunities in throughout their day. So things like, you know, standing up during a commercial break if they're watching TV or uh, simple ways to add, say, a balance activity when they're brushing their teeth, as well as ways to incorporate more social activity throughout uh, their weeks as well. Goal setting is a key principle as well. Participants set physical activity and social goals and have the opportunity to adjust them throughout the course of the program. Coaches really encourage participants to make these goals relevant. Uh, some 
participants identify that they want to feel like they have more energy and flexibility to be able to play uh, and spend time with their grandchildren. Uh, others, a key motivating goal is to stay independent in their homes for as long as possible. So then coaches will help those participants to identify activities that will, will help them along the way to those goals. Uh, resource sharing is, is one of the other principles uh, and our activity coaches really are the experts in their communities and provide information about resources, programs and supports available to participants where they live. And participants also share resources with each other. Uh, the education uh, component within each group meeting, there is a specific topic of focus. Uh, some include falls prevention, nutrition, stress and anxiety management, and of course, physical activity. Um, and, and the education component really is, a, is the hook. Um, but um, really what we've heard that keeps people coming back is the social connection. So we see um, we see participants really enjoying learning from each other and, and helping each other to problem solve, which, which leads into that next bubble there. Um, the participants help each other to identify what challenges they may be facing and help each other to uh, overcome those challenges or find solutions. So on top of the participant experience, we really see Choose to Move as having benefits for the organization as well. A variety of organizations partner with us to deliver Choose to Move, including organizations such as yours who are in the community-based senior services sector. Uh, some examples include neighborhood houses, healthcare societies, foundations, etc. cetera. Uh, we've also partnered in the past and and, and still do with recreation facilities. Communities vary in size and location. I believe our smallest delivery partner location to date is in the village of Grenile in uh, northern BC and then ranging to our, our largest municipalities as well. For organizations, we really see some, some strong benefits. Uh, the first being strengthening your networks. Uh, and we see this in a few ways. One, um, connecting with organizations you're already connected with for referral or, or and we encourage you to connect with other organizations that you may not be connected with already who also serve seniors. We also encourage you to link with other organizations who provide physical activity and social opportunities uh, for seniors. The second benefit really is building that capacity and, and developing champions within your organizations. Um, we see that our activity coaches learn how to better support seniors and learn more about their needs and really build their capacity and build on their existing strengths to help them to um, learn more about how to support seniors to be more active and connected. And the other bonus here is that as we grow and have more and more activity coaches and organizations, we've formed a community of practice where uh, activity coaches from different organizations around the province connect with each other to learn and, and share uh, best practices. And finally, we see um, Choose to Move as a great opportunity to broaden your reach. Um, many of our uh, current and past partners have seen Choose to Move as a way to bring in new clients and new members to their organization uh, who then stay with the organization once Choose to Move concludes and will join other existing programs within the uh, organization like walking programs, meal programs, etc. I'm going to pause there. Sarah, anything to add? No, I think you've covered it really well, Krista. Um, again, we, we really see Choose to Move as um, enhancing uh, or elevating the ability of, of the older adult participant to be more active and, and, and social, uh, but, but also to, you know, to elevate the capacity of the organization that delivers Choose to Move to, to uh, better achieve their mission. Uh, and to better network with uh, other organizations uh, and supports in their community to, um, uh, to engage older adults. So, so yeah, I'd say carry on and, and uh, a great summary so far. Great, thanks.
So I've mentioned the activity coach a few times now. Um, and so you may be wondering who is this person and, and what kind of qualifications do they need to be an activity coach? Um, and really the Choose to Move activity coaches are the, the heart and soul of Choose to Move. Um, and the, the key defining feature of, of an activity coach is that they care about seniors, that they know about what's available in their community. Uh, in the past, we've had many fitness professionals deliver Choose to Move, but over the years, we've learned that that is not the only kind of person who can deliver Choose to Move. Uh, you do not have to have a background in fitness to be an activity coach. Many organizations train an existing member of staff and, and you know, coaches have included folks like settlement workers, uh, senior support staff, teachers, uh, for some examples. But really the, the key feature that, that ties all activity coaches together is that they are really invested in the success of each participant and really believe in, in the goals of Choose to Move. We do provide training for activity coaches. So um, you're not expected to be able to do this right out the gates. Um, and our, our training is online and self-directed. Uh, there are two online modules. So the first being self-directed, which is mostly you know, the nuts and bolts of, of Choose to Move. And the second is an interactive module where coaches read about common scenarios they may come across and discuss with other coaches how they would approach these situations. Once completed the online portions, a new coach will meet for a one hour Q&A session with a member of our team. In total, the training is expected to take about eight hours, but can be done on each individual's own pace and with what works with their schedule. One of the beauties of Choose to Move is that it can be customized to meet the needs of the organization. Uh, you see here that Choose to Move can be delivered in person or virtually. Uh, historically, we were delivering Choose to Move in person only, but of course, with the advent of uh, COVID-19, we uh, had to rapidly adapt and we um, began to deliver with our amazing partners Choose to Move in a virtual setting. Um, and so now we, we have Choose to Move, it's available in, in for whatever format makes the most sense for the organization. With the being now in step three of the province's reopening plan, we are keen to return to in-person programming uh, this fall um, and many organizations are planning to do so, but we are able to respond to the needs of the organization. Um, Choose to Move is 12 weeks in duration, um, and it is customizable to the needs of the organization and clientele. So if that timeline needs to be shifted or the delivery format needs to be shifted, that's, that's all possible. And we've seen a number of organizations do different types of adaptations over the years to make it make Choose to Move more relevant for their uh, client base, as well as for their uh, community. Uh, some examples, you know, during the pandemic, we had some very, very creative coaches uh, deliver Choose to Move in different ways uh, to be available virtually. Uh, a couple of communities uh, amazingly used the radio to deliver some of the content and then used a teleconference for the group components. Um, we've seen uh, many organizations bring in local guest speakers to help deliver some of the educational content. So some have brought in community paramedics, dietitians, physiotherapists, for example. And some have incorporated more movement into the meetings. Our in-person meetings do feature um, movement break suggestions, uh, but some organizations have taken it a step further and partnered with uh, yoga instructor, for example, to give a more um, focused physical activity instruction at the end of each meeting. So to date, we have been in many different communities across the province, as you can see by our map here. 
We've reached over 6,400 older adults and that number continues to grow. Uh, we've delivered over 650 programs in over 84 communities and our, we've had over 100 coaches trained so far and, and we're hoping that that number will continue to grow as time goes on. Of course, I'm here representing the active aging research team and we've been actively evaluating Choose to Move since it's, uh, it first began delivery in 2016. And we've been really pleased to see that the impact of Choose to Move and that we see in, in, the, in the data that Choose to Move does successfully increase physical activity, increase social connectedness, reduces loneliness and improves access to community resources. And I'm going to pass it back over to Sarah. Thanks, Krista. Um, I get to share a little bit more about, um, about some of the experiences of Choose to Move in this next section of uh, the presentation. Uh, just really, you know, how it shows up in, in community and how it, it does benefit those who deliver and, and uh, the program and, and those who participate. And, and this slide here uh, just demonstrates uh, some of those uh, unique communities um, uh, that we have um, partnered with, the unique organizations that we've partnered with. And really the point of the slide is, is to, uh, to let you know that, um, you know, any shape, size of, of organization can deliver Choose to Move and, and our uh, implementation support team is, is available to help adapt the program uh, to your strengths and, and to your priorities. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Um, you know, just to, to drive home the experience uh, of, of the older adult, um, we've we've seen you know time and time again uh, how friendships form through Choose to Move, friendships that are sustained longer than than the arc of the twelve week program. Uh, really, um, connections made on shared interests. You know, Choose to Move provides this opportunity for older adults to identify what. Uh, their interests are to reflect on them and, and to, to then pursue uh, incorporating those interests in, into their day-to-day -day routine um, and, and really uh, rewarding when, when they can find others in their group or others in the community who, who are interested in the same thing. Uh, Krista had mentioned, you know, walking uh, tends to be a, 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 an activity that uh, is available to many older adults, no matter where they live. Um, and uh, often we see uh, friendships forming over shared walks. Next slide. Uh, we, we also see uh, that physical activity uh, or physical abilities increase with Choose to Move. Um, we've, we've you know, had, had people uh, who've come through Choose to Move highlight uh, how much their balance has, has improved, how much stronger they feel uh, because they are incorporating more uh, physical activity into their program. Um, and, and we do make that differentiation between physical activity and exercise. Um, we, we really like to promote the sit, last, move more, and, and that's um, attractive and consumable uh, by the older adult uh, participant. Um, exercise feels intimidating, physical activity feels possible. Um, and, and really we see uh, that these strengths um, uh, increase um, with participants and, and, and we really see older adults defying that um, uh, stereotypical kind of trajectory of aging, you know, a trajectory of decline. Um, and um, we, we see gains being made uh, and, and sustained in, in their physical uh, capacities. Okay. Next slide, Krista. Um, as we've talked about uh, a few times, uh, you know, the organization is often strengthened through the delivery of Choose to Move. Um, we know that um, many organizations have struggled to try and find that, that right fit uh, physical uh, activity program um, and, and maybe aren't sure how to, to promote physical activity and support physical activity uh, because they're, they're not um, they're not a recreation uh, 
uh, focused uh, organization, but, but they know the importance of physical activity and that, that sit less, move more uh, mentality. And uh, Choose to Move has come into many of these organizations and, and just given them that ready to go program uh, and, and have supported their, their constituents in doing so. And, and lastly, you know, through, the, through our support and the support of our team, um, we see many offshoot uh, benefits um, because of Choose to Move. And as Krista had talked about before, you know, so many of our community partners pivoted to online delivery throughout the pandemic and, and uh, our team supported uh, these organizations to, to make that move uh, in many regards. And, uh, you know, benefit being now uh, and new channels to, to reach uh, older adults, but uh, but really, you know, even beyond the online uh, capabilities, uh, big, bigger networks, stronger networks with with other organizations in their community. So I am I've been waiting for this part of the the our time together uh, and to, to bring Omnia into the conversation. Uh, Omnia has been a champion of Choose to Move. Uh, for the last uh, year or more now, actually, Omnia, and, uh, and has really made uh, choose to move her own and, and uh, brought it into Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House in, in, in a unique way. So uh, I'm, I'm keen to have this conversation with you, Omnia, and to, to, to give you some space to, to highlight your experience. So, um, you know, just to start us off, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role generally at Mount Pleasant and some of the things that Mount Pleasant Neighborhood has, um, focuses on when it comes to seniors, because many on the call might not be familiar with neighborhood houses, knowing that we've got callers in from across the province. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to the webinar. My role at the Neighborhood House, I have been working as a seniors programmer at the Neighborhood House for more than four years, leading out uh, trips, walking clubs, different workshops and cooking classes for older adults. And also my other job is a settlement worker for newcomer families. Great. And, and when did you start delivering Choose to Move? Uh, and tell us a little bit about some of the programs that you've led so far. So uh, in the spring of 2020, we have planned to launch the Choose to Move in person. But then uh, after the pandemic hit, we had to change and to deliver it online. That happened for almost one and a half year. Uh, during the one and a half year, we had one time, uh, we did the hybrid module that we, uh, we had a very small gathering of five older adults at the neighborhood house and the rest of the group uh, over the Zoom platform. And we are currently now preparing to deliver the program fully in person at the neighborhood house. We're super excited about that, but but also to have seen uh, some of the ingenuity in your delivery with uh, over the pandemic to, to try and keep uh, the in-person going where possible in that, that hybrid model. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your your training experience with Choose to Move? Because certainly, you know, you've you've not led um, uh, a program like like Choose to Move before or a physical activity program before. So so can you let some of the, the, the attendees of the webinar kind of get a flavor of what that training experience was like? Of course, of course, Sarah. So actually, uh, the training it's um, it was amazing because it's a self-directed training platform, which was very convenient for me. Like I can I can do it at, at, in my convenience, like for a long or a short session based on how much time I had available. Uh, I was able also to back review and take the quiz. It was also helpful to understand how to deliver the choose to move. Also, the great thing about it, it's very detailed and uh, stepwise. Uh, it gives an information how to roll out uh, the program. There are also two great things I liked about the training is uh, the videos being shared in the training were very helpful in facilitating, in facilitating the gatherings and prepare for my own program. 
uh, it also has uh, great resources. Uh, like the most one I like is the Get Active page because I actually use that page to get uh, some of the physical activity exercises like the uh, chair exercise. I used it as a group activity in each session for the choose to move in one of my uh, cohorts. Yeah. Great. So, so some resources from your training that you could incorporate into the delivery of the program as well. Um, yeah, that that's great. And I, I, um, I wonder if uh, you could just, um, you know, thinking about those those group meetings and the interactions that you've had with with the seniors in your community through Choose to Move. Can you just even share a couple of success stories or or key kind of highlights? Um, from your from your experience of course of course we had actually some participants who speak the same language they felt like more comfortable talking to each other and they became activity buddies and they met up for walks and lunches and socially they became connected socially outside the choose to move they go outside for the farmers market have lunches outside uh, also, we have several participants joining the, uh, the MPNH uh, walking clubs and other programs offered at the neighborhood house. So you saw firsthand some of those, those friendships form within the program and, and kind of move to, to uh, um, settings outside the program as well, which is really something uh, we try we try and promote and choose to move, you know, the, the value we, we've seen and choose to move is that, you know, it's a 12 week program, but it builds uh, connections and capacity for, for healthier behaviors longer term. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I know that that walking club was, was really uh, quite popular uh, with, with so many of your participants. Um, yeah. Amia, over, overall, like, you know, how would you say Choose to Move has compared with some of the other programs that, that you've offered before for seniors? Uh, the, what really I liked about the Choose to Move, it's very engaging and dynamic. Like the, the older adults really enjoyed every part of it, especially especially that, that smart goals part and uh, the tailored action planning uh, that we do for each, for each older adult. Uh, the group meetings also, it has uh, a great structure of uh, an education component and a social component where they share their goals, their challenges they are facing. And um, the kind of uh, needed some creation is like we included this uh, uh, small group activity during, during the group meeting. It was also very helpful, and uh, I I got great feedbacks from uh, from the older adults about including uh, that in the gathering. Great. So so that um, sort of focus of the program to really bring it down to the individual level, really work with their interests, their capacities, their um, you know their specific goals uh, was was um, valuable. Um, and, and just lastly, Amnia, what would you say the legacy of Choose to Move will be for Mount Pleasant Neighborhood House? What, what are, what's the program going to leave behind? I know you're going to keep it up for another year while we have funding, but, uh, but what do you expect uh, will be left behind uh, at the Neighborhood House uh, from the Choose to Move experience? Yeah, so actually the Choose to Move, it helped us to reach new people who are now joining other MPNH programs. And it gave us the opportunity to build new partnerships with individual instructors, like the yoga uh, instructors and uh, other organizations. Uh, like I would give an example with, uh, we partnered with the Vancouver Tap Dance Society who were actually, uh, they tailored low impact physical activity that can be done during the group meeting. Uh, so, yeah, building new partnerships with other organizations was really a uh, new thing and a great thing to the neighborhood house and reaching out to new, new older adults in the community. 
Oh, fantastic. Well, we're so excited to see uh, how the next year goes as you uh, move into step three and welcome more Choose to Move participants uh, to your neighborhood house. Amya, um, yeah, do you have any last kind of thoughts that you wanted to share with, uh, with the attendees before we pass it back to Krista? Um, actually, I would uh, I would say that uh, that the self-directed training it has really many great resources that I knew not only during the training, during facilitation, during the facilitation of the program itself. So I would definitely encourage all the activity coaches to use the Choose to Move website and the Get Active page. Uh, as a, a great tool during the facilitation of their of their group meetings, like all along the way. Yeah, not only in the beginning of the self-training. Awesome. Great. Yeah. And and we've we've heard just like you know from you, Omnia, that the the training has helped kind of inform other programs or how they uh, how how uh, seniors programmers are are um, offering opportunities out to to their community. So um, yeah, there are lots of knock on benefits of of that training. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and and speaking with us today. And I hope you'll hang tight with us as we anticipate a Q and A session at the very end. I'm going Thank to turn so it back much, over to yeah, my pleasure. I'm going to turn it back over to Krista, and I know she's going to she's going to review some of the resources uh, and supports that uh, came up in in Omnia's discussions too. Great, thanks, thanks, Sarah, and thanks, Omnia. That's wonderful. Um, so, really, I have two kind of main pieces left to go over before the we wrap up and head to the question and answer period. Um, but first, I wanted to highlight three supports that are available to you and your clients, whether whether or not you end up delivering Choose to Move or not. So the first is the Get Active portal on our Choose to Move website, which is what uh, Omnia was just referring to. So this um, website, we've our team has curated a number of different videos, printable resources um, for activities that individuals can do at home. Really, the pandemic was the was the uh, Kickstarter to get this page up and going, but. Um, these are really reliable and excellent sources of videos. Um, and so we've heard from older adults and activity coaches alike that they really see this as a valuable resource as it's, you know, it's trustworthy and, and it's a one stop shop. And you can see on the side of the screen here, the different types of activities um, that are available on this page. Uh, the second resource is the choose to move at home check-in which is a email newsletter that goes out twice a week um, and you can sign up for the newsletter again you don't have to be a choose to move participant um, you can sign up for the newsletter uh, on our website by again visiting choose to move.ca and clicking subscribe you'll then be brought to a screen and if you scroll to the bottom you, you know put in your contact details in the, the very bottom would you like to receive the choose to move at home check-in and then if you select yes then you'll be on the list to receive that. Um, and the newsletter features three different things each issue. The first is a physical activity resource. So uh, uh, most often it's a video. Uh, here in this issue, it's a chair yoga class. Um, the second is a, a kind of general resource. These are our wide ranging in topics and, and this sample issue here is uh, uh, on mindfulness. And then the third piece is the challenge that kind of encourages uh, people who are receiving the, the check-in to read the, the, the um, resource from that week and, and apply it in, in their lives. So give them that little bit of extra motivation. Uh, the third resource is we have a Facebook page. So if you go on to Facebook and search for Choose to Move or type in facebook.com slash choose to movement, uh, you'll find our page. Um, this is a great way to stay up to date on um, where 
and when programs are upcoming, we post relevant articles um, to, you know, to help keep seniors active and connected. And we share Choose Smooth success stories there as well. It's really geared towards older adults, but we certainly encourage uh, you as organizations to follow along as well. And then uh, saving the best for last, <laughs> how can you get involved? I will outline three ways. So the first way is perhaps the most simple is just to spread the word. Um, so Choose to Move exists in, in many communities already. It might be in yours, it may not, um, but it is also available online uh, for participants to join from anywhere in the province. We do have promotional uh, materials available if you would like to uh, post them up in your facility or, or hand them out to your clients. Uh, just get in touch with us uh, afterwards and we'd be happy to share those. Um, and of course, uh, if you share our Facebook page, that's a great way to do that as well. Uh, the second is to refer into existing programs. As I mentioned, uh, there are many communities that have programs ongoing. This map looks a little bit sparse at the moment, but we're just uh, finalizing uh, where programs will be uh, upcoming this fall. So on our website, choosemove.ca, you can click on locations and that will give you the most up-to-date um, list of uh, upcoming program locations and each uh, facility, you can click on the um, little flag there and it'll give you the contact phone number uh, for registration and start date, etc. The other great way is to subscribe again to the newsletter um, and that will we will send out updates uh, periodically on when and where new programs are starting. And there you can also identify yourself as someone who wants to refer individuals into programs and then we'll make sure to link you up with those programs in your area. And then I'm going to pass it back over to Sarah to review the third and final way to get involved. Yeah, great. Um, we have a new uh, website launching today. Uh, so if uh, you visited the Active Aging Society website before, I encourage you to hop on today and, and navigate through our new website. Uh, you'll see under the Engage tab uh, a drop-down um, uh, panel uh, and, and an opportunity there, a, a tab there to uh, become a partner. Uh, and this really is just an expression of, of interest form. Uh, we are really keen to see who else uh, is, is interested and able to deliver Choose to Move. Uh, you can uh, fill out this, this Google form, um, a, a few questions to tell us a little bit about your organization and the older adults that you serve. Uh, and we'll be in touch with you uh, upon submission of that form. And we really want to hear from organizations uh, that are striving to uh, serve more culturally diverse uh, older adults. Um, we know that there are many barriers to participating in community programming, and we really do want to, to make a concerted effort to um, bring health promoting opportunities to all seniors across the province uh, through, through um, organizations like yours. Uh, we're really keen to serve older men. We know uh, that um, older men face different uh, uh, challenges and, and have different interests. So, so if you have uh, some strengths or, or also some interest in, in serving older men, please be in touch. Uh, rural and remote communities um, are our key priority area for us. So uh, happy to hear from you if you're, if you're serving um, older adults in, in the rural remote region, especially uh, in BC's north. Uh, and, and as before, low, low income or, or any senior who's facing barriers to pr participating in health promoting programs. Over to you again, Krista, to, to wrap us up. Okay, well, that's, that's about it. So um, certainly, yeah, and we'll send around these details uh, or Amon will after after the webinar with our the you know the links from the presentation and and the email address here. Certainly, if you're you're keen to refer or, or have any questions, 
please reach out to us at this email address. Um, and then we have our websites here as well. Uh, the Choose to Move website is where, where to go to get the Get Active page and sign up for the check-in newsletter and to be a referral partner. The Active Aging Society website is where to go to express your interest if you want to become a, a new partner with us and deliver Choose to Move in your community. And then the, the Facebook page is great just for general promotion. And that, that is it. So back over to Esther. Thank you so much, Sarah, Omnia, and uh, Krista. What a pleasure to have you come and join us today for this webinar. And thank you for so thoroughly presenting that. Omnia, we loved having you join us as a firsthand experience of what um, Choose to Move training is like, as well as how receptive uh, people you've worked with have been to the program. So that's truly a delight to hear. And some really great statistics, Krista. I think the one that really struck me was the, the fact that in 2016, we have more people that are over 85 than under 15. That, you know, so often we work with percentages, but man, that's a, that's a powerful one. So thank you three so much for this. So I'll just quickly review where we're gonna post um, this recording as well as um, where you'll find the slides to this. Oops. There we go. Uh, so just a reminder for those of you that are part of our CBSS community and have already become members of our core BC, um, you can search for this um, in your private groups or on, sorry, the website uh, through keywords as well as by using the magnifying glass icon or if you prefer to search by category um, or simply by webinar. There's a, a quite a bit of resources available, but we just wanted you to uh, give you a reminder of how to access this information. So um, we have a, a compliment as well as a question for you. And then anyone else, if you have some questions, please put those in the chat. We do have about nine minutes where we can uh, take those. So I'll just read out loud. First of all, Layla's uh, compliment, which was, this sounds really great. Thank you, three. Uh, but she is wondering if there is support with transportation to these programs for seniors. Uh, once things open up, are there ideas for transportation as well? So I'm just wondering who'd like to feel that question. I'll, I'll take that one up, Esther. Um, we work really closely with each organization to design um, or to adapt Choose to Move and the resources that we do have. Uh, to, to support program delivery. So if an organization was um, sort of struggling with uh, transportation for seniors, which we know is, is a real um, barrier to participating in community programs, we would work closely with that organization to find some solutions. Uh, as I said before, you know, priorities for us longstanding and, and definitely moving into the future is to reduce barriers to participating in health promoting programs. And, and to bring in uh, older adults who, who haven't, um, who are maybe hard to reach or maybe haven't been participating for various reasons, including uh, a limited access to transportation. So, so in, again, you know, hop onto that uh, expression of interest form, get in touch with us. We'd love, love to talk to you about some clever ways we can tackle that transportation challenge uh, in your community. Great, thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, I think that's a great question, Layla. Thank you for asking it, especially um, Sarah, as you mentioned that part of your target is to find um, communities in rural and remote areas. Um, I could definitely see how Layla's question is super pertinent for those communities. So thank you so much. We have another question. Um, so this one is, sorry, could you please report, repost the link to become a partner? So is that possible to put that in the chat, the, the link? Not too sure who can take care of that. We we can. I think I see Krista navigating on her screen. She's doing it, and I know uh, that the United Way team will follow up with all the links that were shared today, and 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 maybe we can just plug for for a, a dedicated pull out to that link for for those who are interested. Yeah. So Krista has put up the Active Aging Society um, uh, website, and if you go to uh, engage the engage tab. There'll be a drop down menu from there with with the uh, become a partner tab available. Glad to hear there's some interest in that in that space. We look Great. forward to hearing from everybody. 
Yeah, thank you, Krista, for putting that in the chat. Um, so another question maybe I had as people kind of percolate on whether they have any more questions for our three panelists, but what's, um, what is the funding model? Like, does it come with some funding also? I wasn't, yeah, if you could speak a little bit more yeah, to that. I can speak to that as well. Um, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have uh, the Active Aging Society uh, um, has been funded by the BC Ministry of Health to, to make Choose to Move available across the province. Um, so we do have uh, program funding that 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 would come uh, with the provision of Choose to Move, and and we strive to to reach as many seniors as possible with with the funds that we have. So you know, based on our experience in delivering Choose to Move, we have a sense, even though we acknowledge that all organizations come kind of in a unique shape and size, we have a sense of, of you know, the resources needed uh, for, for each program and, and for the different contexts. So we work with the organization to, to resource properly and, and to really build that, that capacity and legacy uh, from, from that uh, short-term funding. Okay, great. And I don't see any more questions in the chat or Q&A, but just wanted to ask if you could expand a bit more. You'd mentioned about being able, having different um, languages able to access the program. So were there any um, developments in your uh, resources to offer them in different languages at the moment that have been started, or is it something for the future? Should I take this one again too? I will. Okay, Chris is like, yeah, that's you. Um, so we we are actually in a, the research team at, uh, at UBC is in a, in a novel kind of um, uh, early relationship with a group based in Quebec. So they're they're doing an extensive uh, translation of Choose to Move in, to French. Um, but here in BC, uh, the translations that we've seen. Um, have been uh, really led by the community organizations that we partner with. So, uh, for example, we partnered with Options in Surrey with the United Way, actually, um, back in, in 2018 uh, to, to deliver Choose to Move with Options. And, and we saw Options at, at, uh, deliver in, in multiple different languages, really through their um, the leadership of their activity coach. So the activity coach being able to do the training in English, that is a limitation right now of, of uh, Choose to Move. The training is in English. All of our materials are in English. We are seeking funding, the research team, as well as the Active Aging Society to do more kind of uh, comprehensive uh, translation of, of our uh, of our program. But, but at the moment, all of those resources are in English. But where we have bilingual um, activity coaches, they can do the, the training, access the resources, and then translate what's appropriate. And, and you know, beyond the, the language translations, we are also starting to see some leadership uh, from the community organizations in cultural adaptations. Uh, you know, what, what is appropriate for, um, for uh, you know, a, a South Asian uh, community. How do they want to gather? What are their priorities? We saw leadership, uh, again, a, 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 a funded um, partnership with the United Way with Seabird Island Band. You know, what is appropriate for the, uh, that particular Indigenous community? What were their strengths? What could they draw on? So, so those adaptations also happening to, to make Choose to Move available to more diverse seniors. That's exciting. And I and I'm asking that question because as I was seeing your presentation, it's all the stuff my grandma talks about. Um, yeah. And she goes to a place in Vancouver, and I'm pretty sure um, it's because her or coordinator speaks Spanish and probably has done exactly that looked at it in English and then translated it to, to be able to bring that resource to Spanish speaking participants. So um, yeah, I, I knew that that was happening. So I wanted you to mention that because I think people are, that's sometimes an ask that we, we forget that we're just doing that in community. Um, even though, yeah, yeah. So that's really exciting, Sarah, that, um, and Krista, that your organization has that on your radar and is looking for partnerships to create more. That's exciting. Yeah. And I'll just pause like quickly, Amia. I don't know if you wanted to share any of your experience having, you know, delivered Choose to Move and, and doing some of those cultural language related adaptations and bringing in those um, older adults who maybe don't have English as a, as a first language. 
Yeah, so actually I found during uh, during facilitating the, the, the group meetings, uh, like the, the older others who speak uh, who speak different language than the English, they feel very comfortable in having an activity body, uh, speaking the same language, mm -hmm. they go outside with each other. Uh, so that's, that's, that's definitely a, uh, was a great opportunity for them to get connected again uh, mm -hmm. with other older elders speaking the same language. It happened like with four, four, four new language, four, four new languages, yeah, other than the English in the group meetings. That's so amazing, Omnia. And I love physical activity is kind of a, um, a language for all, right? You can copy action. So that makes it very accessible. So I just want to take a moment. Thank you very much. Uh, we're at the end of our time. And thank you to the three pan panelists for presenting today. Also, a huge thank to all the participants that joined us and made this webinar uh, fun, uh, fun to know that people are learning and taking this information back to their organizations. I want to wish everybody a great afternoon and uh, hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care, thank you so much, Esther. Bye now.